The Bible is a spiritual book, and as you begin to read the Bible, you are confronted with the reality of the spirit realm. The shocking thing is, there are believers who don't believe in the spirit realm, which is very questionable to say the least, because the Bible says explicitly in John 4, 24, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. If God is a spirit, he therefore has to dwell in the spirit realm. Within the spirit realm, there are also other spirits, which are both good and bad. We find the holy angels there and their different rankings, and we also find evil spirits and demon spirits with their different rankings. Luke 11, 24 through 26. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places seeking rest, and finding none, he saith, I will return unto my house whence I came out. And when he cometh, he findeth it swept and garnished. Then goeth he, and taketh to him seven other spirits, more wicked than himself. And they enter in, and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. The atmosphere and spirit you will find in a casino in comparison to the atmosphere you will find in a church during praise and worship are two completely different atmospheres. And we ash believers need to know this. The same can be said about people's homes. The atmosphere in your home may be completely different to your neighbor's house because of what occurs in both your homes. You can either have the Holy Spirit and the holy angels occupying your home or unholy spirits occupying your home. This is where we hear of people's experiences with haunted houses, where people hear footsteps in their homes and strange noises. However, the decision of which spirit will be in our home is ours. Not only is this true for home, but this is true for us as individuals. Now, one of the most common questions we have been receiving is how demons come in. How do demons gain access to humans and homes? We will aim to look at three of the doors they use. What we need to know about demons is that demons seek the weakest moments of our lives to take advantage. There are several doors through which the devil can gain access to our homes and our lives. We shall discuss them so that we will be mindful not to allow those doorways to be open for demonic intrusion into our homes. Sustained emotional pressure, a period of emotional weakness. There is a famous British minister called Derek Prince, and he spoke of this subject many years ago as he listed several different avenues demons enter, some of which were prenatal influences, a moment of fear, and many more. But I want to highlight one which shocked me, and that is sustained emotional pressure. Times of emotional pressure and shocks can become a doorway for demons to access the example Derek used was a woman is expecting to get married and then right before the wedding day the engagement is cancelled and she has to deal with the spirit of disappointment. And the truth is, at one point or another, we all go through deep, deep disappointment. He highlighted the fact that if you build your hopes up in something, maybe it's a relationship or a business or whatever it is, and it doesn't work, it opens a door to unclean spirit. Because the devil always tries to come in your weakest state. Notice when he came to Jesus in the wilderness, after 40 days of fasting. The devil doesn't fight fair. How do we close this door? The answer is the Holy Spirit. So I encourage you today to tell you that we need the Holy Spirit of God. We all know that the Holy Spirit is the comforter. However, the original Greek word that is used is the parakletos. Para meaning alongside, Cleo meaning to call. In other words, the Holy Spirit is one called alongside to help. However, we have a very limited view of the Holy Spirit. We see the Holy Spirit as the comforter who comes alongside when we're really heartbroken and upset and wraps us up in something soft, nice and warm and gives us a big hug. This is not true. The word comforter has changed its meaning over time. And today, if you say, I will comfort you, invariably what you mean by saying that is I will get you out of trouble. I will get you away from situations. 
I will get you away from whatever's causing you bother. But in fact, the word comforter originally meant exactly the opposite. It means to put someone right in the middle of the battle and give them the strength that they need to face it. It comes from the Latin word fortis. From the word we get the word fortified, fortification. It means to be put right in the middle of the battle and equipped and fashioned and formed with the strength you need to overcome and to win. I encourage you to ask the Lord for the Holy Spirit. He is the spirit of power. Whatever you are facing today, the Holy Spirit will give you the strength not to run away from it, not to shy away from it, but to face up to it. The Holy Spirit will give you the power. Jesus didn't send the spirit of truth so that we can be defeated, defeated with our challenges, defeated with emotional challenges, defeated with spiritual challenges. The spirit of truth came to give you the power to face whatever you are facing in your life today. In this time, we must seek for another level of connection with the Holy Spirit. This will send a jolt of power and a newness into the core of our being. Power comes when the spirit of man is connected with the spirit of God. You don't have to face the battles of life alone. God has given you the provision of the Holy Spirit. He will give you strength. Another door, deliberate sinful habits. A consistent practice of sin is another doorway used by the enemy. The Bible says that he that sins is of the devil. This means that demonic spirits will always be available where the practice of sin is consistent. Taking up a simple habit can open the door for him. Judas Iscariot made a wrong decision to betray Christ. As a result, Satan took advantage of him. Luke 22.3 Then Satan entered Judas, called Iscariot, one of the twelve. One wrong decision is enough to open the door to demonic influence in a home. Another doorway is the rebellion against the first two commandments in your life, or your family history. Exodus 20, 3-5 Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation. The first two commandments have to do with idolatry, and all forms of idolatry automatically open the door. And if you notice what the Lord said, the Lord says, He will visit the iniquity and sins of the fathers to the third and fourth generations. No warning like this is highlighted for the other commandments, except the first two. What this tells us is that our actions as parents have a direct effect on generations to come. So this works vice versa, meaning that if the actions of our father or mother, grandfather or grandmother, great-grandmother or father have been involved in idolatry, there is an opening in your life that you need to close. This highlights the importance of the Holy Spirit and why we need the Holy Spirit in our life. Because in some cases, and for some of us, we may have no idea what our parents or great-grandparents were involved in. Therefore, how can you fight and pray against something you know nothing about? But the Holy Spirit does. The Holy Spirit knows what the generations before you were involved in. Romans 8:26. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses. Here, our weakness is the knowledge of what was done by generations before us. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us, with groanings which cannot be uttered. This is why it is so important to pray in the Spirit. You have no idea what battle the Holy Spirit is fighting for us when we pray in the Spirit. We have no idea what doors he is closing in our lives when we pray in the Spirit. In modern Christian circles, there is too much emphasis on what doors God opens. We need to thank God even more for the doors he closes. Now we have looked at three doors. Emotional pressure, deep heartbreak, sinful habits, and breaking the first two commandments.
All three require the Holy Spirit. To deal with emotional pressure and heartbreak, we need the Holy Spirit. To overcome sinful habits, once again, it is because of the Holy Spirit. Holiness is not just a matter of imitation and trying to follow Christ's example. It is a matter of inhabitation, God's Spirit coming to dwell within us. The Spirit of God is at work within us, day in and day out, shaping us, molding us, refining in us the image of Jesus. We cannot become holy on our own. God gives us His Spirit to help us obey His Word. He gives us the power to overcome sin. He is the one who makes us more like Jesus. And finally, to defeat the idolatry and the sins of past generations, Romans 8, 2. When we pray in the Spirit, the Holy Spirit is closing doors we know nothing about. Isn't that wonderful that God gave him to us?